It's like, Australia, man. Australia. <laughs> You're in the game, right? I am, yeah. <sighs> <laughs> I'm in. It's not, not like that last time, man, where we're just like, had to yeah. do the janky Discord broadcast because I was too busy talking and not paying attention. <sighs> All right, we're in the series. In the top left here in the red, it is Liquids Uthermal. Can I do the other one, Manny? No. No, you can't go. Go for it. Down here. What's better than white bread? It's rye bread. It's Bly. I don't know what that clan is. Is that actually that's his team. That's, Our... that's, raise, that's that's raise your edge gaming. Oh, and that's, the logo literally is raising its edge. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Ah, didn't even put that together. There you go. Awesome. Cheeky Bly up against uh, aggressive and uh, powerful U Thermal, the player who tried to go BC rush last week and against Protoss. Didn't quite work out against Parting, but um, yeah, I, I just hope it's that same flavor of crazy U Thermal we see here today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, all, all I've seen on my channel so far, I've seen two U Thermal. Sorry, guys, to interrupt that. Massive thanks to Trollbat and Crater Moon. We're turning off the alert sounds. Sorry for that. Please. Um, but yeah, he's he's only been showing TVPs, and they've been it's been the same build over and over again. It's just like a, a upgradeless marine tank push with SCV boy pool for bunkers. Dr. Ryan mm. managed to at least make the second game of this series awkward, but he kind of like dispatched and just clean cut the head off of Dr. Ryan in game one and Armageddon in two games in a row. Um, so this is the first game, um, or rather the first series that I think is going to be quite close. New Thermal and Bly are pretty well matched, I feel. You know, what, obviously Bly is the, uh, the mad <coughs> lad, the crazy Ukrainian. It's very, very late at night for both of them, but they are going to be playing without ping, which is the upside of two Europeans playing each other. Oh, without yeah. ping, everyone has ping, but less ping. You know what I mean? Don't yeah, be, exactly. Don't be that that guy pushing the glasses up the bridge of his nose, going, "Well, actually, Maynard, everyone has at least you know a couple milliseconds ping. There's no such thing as instant internet, Maynard." I um I saw a speed run of Ice Baneling Escape get posted on Reddit yesterday. Watched about a minute of it, and I was like, "Oh, this is what it's like to play arcade games without lag." Like, <laughs> I've like, never experienced it. I've never I, ever, yeah. ever experienced arcade games in StarCraft Two without lag. Ice Ice Baneling Escape is like literally you need to you need to be a, a precog. You got to see into the future <laughs> to play that from Australia, man. It's like, oh my god. I guess we have the Australian server now, but whenever we're playing, it's with our community, right? Yeah, so you're on you're on a US server because you want to play with your American viewers. <laughs> And it's like 200 ms ice bailing is a no-no. No, no, no. I mean, even for Australia, though, it's like 50 ms at least for me. I've never had anything faster. You see, that's where I am. I am. I have a gross advantage. Um, zero. Zero to two for me. Isn't the server like in your bathroom? Pretty much, yeah. Blizzard actually pays me for it. People are like, oh, pig, you know, are you doing okay? StarCraft's not as popular. I'm like, it's fine, guys. They pay me to host the servers in my house. It's, <laughs> it's all good. And yes, it's my fault whenever the servers go down. <laughs> um, it's because uh, it's because a wallaby got into the into the wiring. So uh, sorry about yeah. that. Whenever you guys can't log in. Server. Yep. <laughs> Quick watch, a roach warren. I said roach warren here for Bly. He's a roach warren. He's a roach boy. All right, uh, real quick tech lab there. So obviously this is all about the scouting. Um, one queen far out front. Uh, Uthermal's Reaper is two Hellions. I mean, this is good little Ling run by from Bly, but a good deeper raise there. It's just going to look for one or two SCVs. The next two Hellions. And this was so well-timed by Bly. There's such a narrow window, yet Uthermal saves every SCV because he is God. <laughs> That's incredible defense there from Uthermal. He's lost, he lost one on the wall in there that was making a depot, but you can't really save that one. And he's got his Reaper breaking off from the Hellingen here to try and get into the main to scout that Roach War, and he does see yeah. it. I mean, the moment you see that queen out there unsupported, you're like, wait, it's four minutes, you have one queen out front? Like, you immediately know your opponent's up to something, but now seeing no lair and the Roach Warren and the Reaper's still being a dick, uh, is he going to try to hold the low ground is my question. Um... It looks like he's going to rely on the Banshees, which should be more than enough to clean this up. The Banshee opening... He's going to bunker up, I think. So good versus Bly. Um, yeah. Oh, he's going to even put the CC down in the wall. All oh, right. Mm, okay. Okay. I think that can get focused down if Bly commits really hard. But the thing is, usually when he sees a Banshee, he he does this, where his Roaches try to run around a little bit. His Lings stay at home to stop Hellion run by We saw Bly do this last week as well. Uh, I think it was against Cuddlebear. And... He kind of just backs off the pressure and tries to drone up from there. So I think Uthermal, having played against this before, is like, yeah, I'll just build my third CC in the wall, no bunker, rely on my Banshees to zone. His build order's barely changed. Like, this is a huge investment from Bly, and Uthermal is getting massively ahead here. 
Yeah, he's uh, almost calling the calling the bluff, I guess. You know, he's just like, yeah, I'm gonna. The, the roaches are out, but I have two banshees sharking. They're out the front of my natural. If the roaches show up, they're going to get double DPS here by these banshees in the sky. Ravages are never going to tag those things with corrosive vial, so he's feeling super confident. All right, the yeah, roaches, roaches are showing up now. Trying to get in there. Uh, yeah, Hellions are there, though. The command center, that SCV, try to get to safety, and it's staying alive for now. Yeah, the roaches. Eight roaches for one depot. I think this is uh, about as bad as your trades can come. We'll at least slow down the uh, the command center, get one SCV, but oof, not as much damage as you'd like there at all. Uh, Ling's yeah, waiting for another run by on the left. He's up four workers against three CCs. We've got double upgrades are about to start whirring with the two upgrades. I mean, this is just insane. Like you've got pressure coming across. Uh, Bly needs to have such sick engagements to get back in this game. You're not wrong. Like, that was just an overwhelmingly bad trade there for Bly. Didn't find any damage. Try to be cheeky. Thermal kind of read him like a book. He's still got that sort of, you know, the Overlord and the Pover Pillar in the natural. So you can see that he's sort of waiting for the Hellions to go by that third base and try and hold that while the Lings dart into the natural. But at the ma meantime, Bly is losing six drones on the other side of the map. These Cloak Banshees are already finding, you know, a great edge here to make mm. the economic situation for Bly even worse than it was before. Yeah, a few drones kind of getting getting over there. Every queen came to the third to try to defend that. And there's nothing in the main. There's no creep spread even connecting the main. Oh, this is nasty, man. Yeah, very nasty. 11 drones gone down 11 to try and take that place. But that's all the lava gone for basically just re retaking that damage loss to the Terran. And that's, you know, if you guys understand how lava works, that is not a good situation for the Zerg. Because as Pig mentioned a couple minutes ago, there is a push gearing out here for Euthermal where he's going to have 1-1, one, one. he's going to have medevac support, a good number of tanks. And Bly is not going to have a ton of lava or even just resources in general to work with. Like, what do you make here? A bunch of roaches, I guess, to try and hold this line? He doesn't really have any chance of getting anything more complicated than that. Yeah, even Creep Trim is getting sniped by those Banshees. Up on 10 and 13 kills apiece uh, for each, each one of those. Um, I am a criminal misuser of the word apiece. Um, so I'm trying to trying to stop that one <laughs> i'm like that is not what a piece means fig um that's right i say i say north hand side um, <laughs> so everyone has their dumb casterisms <laughs> uh we say many north hand man i'm like a good point guy in the chat i don't know <laughs> <laughs> you've never looked at the the north the north clock the, the one yes, with the north south east west that that's a north clock in my head i usually keep it under my dreads uh, uh uh, yeah. Um, it's a big roach army, so 2-2 two, two is going to be the power point for Bly. Um, there's no transition off this for Bly. It's all about the Roach Ravager. He can't build any more drones, and it's all about kind of surviving with three base saturation. Now, I think because this push is coming, and, and Euthermal, I mean, he's got a great army. Combat Shields is here. It's 1-1. One, one, couple of siege tanks, a lot of marines. It's definitely a better army right now. I think Bly, pick away units. Just never go into range of those tanks until you are ready to really punish this army like you can give up this fourth base it does not actually matter for Bly right now keeping that fourth base alive yeah a little counterattack here from the links and it cleaned up very very quickly from the marine reinforcements the big story here is that fourth base of the Zerg only can hold meanwhile Euthermal's multitasking kicking in he's going to try and hit that third base with the double cloak banshee as well killing that queen just a spore crawler the only anti air here, here for that banshee the hatchery the fourth getting very very low that's going to oh. be target fired down in a second here. Oh, no, he's losing this front line. Here comes those roaches. Yeah, great job buying time. I mean, like I said, he doesn't need to keep the hatch alive, but that's a huge bonus. Uh, three hatch roach production, two, two on the way. Plus two attack only now starting for you, Thermal. Where's his tank count? He's only got two. Tanks oh. are what you need, and you need to pull back to your natural right now. You cannot find out. Oh, actually, he's got enough Marines. With an SCV pull, he should be fine, I think. He's going to try and do it without the boy pull at the moment here. It's a lot of Marines. Got 2-2 two, two on the way. Equal upgrades for both players. At the moment with Zerg slightly further along in that 2-2. Two, two. Breaking down that depot wall. Euthermal very close to supply blocks as well. So he needs to remake those post haste if he wants to keep making tanks here. How many yeah. factories has he got right now? It's yeah, just, uh, the one, just the one. The one fact. Uh, he has up to eight barracks though. So the Marauder production is going to pick up in a little bit. He doesn't have add-ons on those barracks yet. Obviously just wants to survive. He's getting a sensor tower to make sure he's in position. A lovely little roach run by from Bly. Obviously he doesn't want to commit until 2-2. Uh, it looks like he's going to go in a ball. I actually really want to see a pre-spread. I do not want to see him ball up one choke point. I want to see Bly spread and come from the third and up the natural ramp at the same time. Collapse on those tanks. If he can get in range of those, it's going to be huge. But he's got to be pre-spread. His 2-2 two is kicking in right now this is his moment to upgrade advantage the scvs need to be pulled and the marines need to get out in front of these tanks you cannot let them get biles on the tanks for free 
Uh, you're absolutely right there. Now, keep in mind, guys, this is looking very scary for the Terran, but it's extremely committed from the Zerg. There's no tier three on the way here for Bly. It's just a giant Roach Ravager army. New Ooh. Thermal's trying to shepherd here. He's going to pull the boys away from that third base and lift it here, knowing that it's very, very hard to hold engaged directly here. Oh, that's a couple more tanks coming in forward. All of Bly's units are balling up a little bit here, Pig, on that right-hand side. He's not splitting his forces here. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's just going for a little advantage. He's adding melee, bane nest, infestation pit. I think Bly realizes there's just too many Marines in there. There's too much firepower. But as this happens, guess what? The upgrade advantage is disappearing. So Bly pulls himself out of that corner where he might have been trapped. He's going to keep picking away, but he cannot engage the Marines and tanks at the same time. 76 Marines and a Marauder. 2-2 two, two upgrades about to kick in. Oh, he goes in. It's only 1-1 one, one versus 2-2. Two, two. This might be too early for you, Thermal. Oh, he's got so many Marines and a lot of medevacs as well, healing them up and engaging directly. So far, this engagement looks really good for the Terran. He lost a bunch of SCVs, but keep in mind that the Zerg has only got sub-60 drones back at home, so it's completely fine. And 2-2 is just going to finish in a couple seconds here. Just 12 more seconds on that yep. plus-2 armor. Plus-2 attack already done. Tank's moving out here a little bit forward, but it's not going to go... He's not getting punished for it. Yeah, good, good sidestepping of these biles by U Thermal. It's 2 2 versus 2 2 upgrades now. We're trying to swap into Ling Bane, but I'd love to see Bly get out just one or two investors. Doesn't need pathogen glands, but he needs he needs something to stop these Marines. It looks like just going into mass a Baneling to complement the Ravages is going to be the goat. It's good creep spread through the middle as well. And this Ravages can buy time. Like a straight up fight, a pitched battle, the Roche Ravager army loses. But look at it, he can just engage, drop Biles, pull back, engage, Biles, pull back. And he's slowing you Thermal down. He's buying time. The Banelings are being spotted by the scan. Baneling speed's not ready yet. No, you're too early. Uh, the ba without Baneling speed, he doesn't want to get in there, but now it's done. And Bly just wants to make sure that the Terran pulls into the trap deep on that creep. And you thought- He's a bit clumped. To the edge of the creep down here and he's- Oh, oh those he's tanks. A lot of them on siege. He's gonna try. He's deep on creep. The Baylings. Oh no! Oh! Oh no! Oh, whoa! Pulled into the trap. Jabated. I mean, you thermal knew it. He's already scanned it. And he's just like, all right, I'm gonna. I'm committed here. I gotta go in. <laughs> so many marines. The Baylings. There's just no coming back from that. You thermal's gonna tap out. You know, when, uh, you and you was oh. that, they'll be like, oh, you know, similar work account, similar army count. Sure that surely there's a game in here for the Terran, but we know Bly. Euthanol knows Bly even better than we do. He knows that Bly is just going to hold that unit production key and finish him off back at home. There's not enough to hold after that. You know, I, sometimes I get the idea. I'm looking at these games and I'm like, what? How, how do you describe a Bly game? Because he, he wins games when the, his opponent is ahead in so many metrics all the time. And it's like he's shepherding his opponent, you know, he's like, he's like, he's like, come on, come on. It's like he's a sheepdog and his opponents, he just shepherds them into this one position where they're so committed to one move and he takes the perfect engage, gets the tech just in time, crushes that engage and suddenly the game's over and you're like, but you were behind in so many things for so long. How do you so consistently manage to do this? Man, I'm, I'm, I'm once again so impressed by Bly. Just, you know, the, he's slowing him down. He's slowing him down. He's buying time. And Euthermal sees the Banes of that Bane speed goes a little too deep on creep. And, oh, God, what a what a disastrous way for that to turn around, man. Mm. He'd be kicking himself for that one. And we'll get into the next game. I haven't seen Euthermal's TVZ until just now. Is he, is, he, is he one of those Terrans that believes in bio? Or is he back on that mech train? Because I know you thermal sort of uh, flipped between one and the other and definitely likes his BC openers <laughs> as a lot of parents do in this matchup from time to time. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. I feel like he's definitely a 50-50 guy, but I am still very... I still have... I've had a lot of troubles actually with the the Katowice replay packs. Um, I've uh, been wanting to go through those and I haven't really been able to, to get most of them to work. So I'm going to try again today to just keep re-downloading and extracting into 27 different folders until I get access to more than six replays from it. Um, so I'm a bit behind on the meta, you know, the, the time zone difference, haven't been keeping up with all of Wardy's amazing content. So I'm, I'm a little bit at a loss, definitely not an expert on the EU players right now, but um, I mean, we've seen him do bio that last game this one seems more of a mech map though, right? Like battle mech? Yeah, Triton's Triton's one of those maps that battle mech can be really nice on. Um, you have a little bit of dead space for the, like between the natural and the third, where the BC can be annoying. You can tuck into the top right corner of the map as well. Um, it's definitely, you know, a, a bit of a better map for mech. I, I I think that Triton in general is a map that Terran's not too happy to play on if they're not up against another Terran. <laughs> They, yeah. they usually don't like playing Zerg or Protoss in this map because of the, uh, you know, the, the 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 girth of the map, and it's also quite a long rush distance. So not only is it long, pig, it's also thick. Well, that's what I like to see in my maps. Uh, you know, I like there to be a little bit of that. Uh, you know, not not just all in all in on one on one uh, metric on one direction. You want it to touch every single side of your taste in the map. Yeah.
Yeah. Got to, uh, got to, got to fill it out. Um, the music, I've still got music on in the background. Sorry about that, guys. Apologies. Uh, sorry, we went straight from playing into casting. I fixed that now. Apologies um, for too much noise there in the background. I think we should be good now. Just a very quick shout out at the start of this game to Dragonite, my friend with a big 35 month resub, and Crater Moon before as well. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate the support. Um, looks like the exact same openings from both sides so far, Maynard. Yep, that's, uh, I mean, that's the wonderful thing about StarCraft is, you know, I've, I've seen, uh, you know, around the around the whole six drone versus 12 drone start con controversy that sort of was remarked on the pylon show. It's like uh, one of the arguments was that this game does not have variety. <coughs> six drones. And I'm like, that is so, so far from the truth. And to get to that point, like the opener here looks the same, but the game can become anything after this point. Like there is so many things that you can do at this point. I mean, Bly, he's the kind of guy that, you know, will drop that early Roach Warren. You can even go for, you can, you can go for Ling Floods, Baneling Busts, Ling Bane Muter, Roach Ravager, Baneling, um, whatever you want. Like there's so many things. Rushing the Hive, yeah. two base stuff. It's everywhere. You know, I actually think everyone has really misunderstood that whole argument. I even saw memes, people being like, oh, you know, Max, it was like the, the uh, what, six workers is better than 12 workers changed my mind and stuff, like went yeah, up on Reddit yeah. yesterday. I, he's I a very intelligent guy and I actually love his blogs. Well, but. the thing is, I actually agree as well with the point that it's not about, <laughs> what I, I agree more with Brown Bear a little bit, but basically it's not complexity or diversity because there is more complexity and diversity in legacy than ever. What it is about the tech choices being more pronounced and, um, and, and, and very clearly uh, visible to both viewers and players, even at a lower level, right? So, mm -hmm. so what I mean by that is if you go muters, you could, you could go muters on two base and you'd just be on muters with like a handful of zerglings for a real extended period, right? There'd be a longer period where you'd be on just that tech choice. You couldn't open up two or three tech uh, structures at the same time as Protoss. If you went Stargate, it was a lot longer until you got the Twilight and the Robo. So it just created more of an extended period of, hey, you got to make that tech choice work for you. You know, you, it's it's less able to just switch into something else. So you yeah, kind I mean, of got more time to savor the taste of a tech choice. And that's what I really think should be the end result of that discussion is us saying, you know what? Maybe some people could argue that's better because you, you get to, you know, really sit on that. In Legacy, you can go attack, switch into something else, right? Like you as a ZVP player, a Zerg, you could just drop a Spire just for them to see it and never use it in any of your games. And that could be part of a solid macro build. Wasting 200 minerals and 200 gas on that in Heart of the Swarm or Wings seems crazy. It makes no <laughs> sense. Like, you're like, no, that's a crazy amount of money. So it's just, um, you know, definitely it was actually more restrictive, but what it did is savor the taste, you know? It was fine whiskey, um, but I, I guess you, you could argue, uh, I'm a big fan of Legacy for many reasons, but I think we could maybe technically, if we had a huge dev team experimenting with things, we could really experiment with different work accounts. And I think it could actually change the game for the better. So I'm actually kind of on side with it. I, I don't have a firm opinion. I just think it's an interesting theoretical discussion. And uh, it really is just that because we know it's not gonna happen 100%. True, true, true. Yeah, no, just to go way back to what I said earlier, like when I when I mentioned that, that wasn't so much like the the experts are saying that thing, but a lot of the community is, you know, a lot of the people yeah. that are in the Twitch are commenting on it like, oh, you, you know, this, the, 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 you know, there's more variety with six workers without sort of elaborating on it. That's what I was talking about. It's more, yeah. it's more talking to, to Guy in the chat or Guy on Reddit versus then, you well, know, Max or, or Neuro. Or, everyone who's or stopped person. playing the game as well, right? Everyone who's stopped playing the game I is like, played. it was so much better then, you know? Yeah, and I'm I've like... Since Wings, but I'm sure Legacy's worse. And I'm like, yeah... It's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, Banshee. Okay, Bly, this is this is serious. What the hell, man? No, Eight kills, nine? Oh. And another one's coming in, and there's no, there's only one queen down at the third. It's going to get at least two or three. Oof. Yeah. Banshees aren't meant to do this. Oh, man. Yeah, this is really crippling this egg back at home. Now, obviously, a lot of drone damage happened in the last game, but it was a little bit later in the game. It was after a, a, an early roach attack. Right now, Bly's not really has a, he doesn't really have any presence on the map whatsoever, and he's just taking it from the Terran. Like these two yeah. banshees are doing so much incredible damage, and the banshees are also escaping both of them. I mean, definitely, we know that that doing damage to Bly is is not the game ender. It can be against some people, and I got to admire his mineral focus. So for a Lingbane Muta build. 
Bly's doing great. His creep spread is actually insane this game. And even though he took damage there, he's focused really hard on his minerals and his natural and his third mineral lines have basically stayed at saturation this whole time. Main has dipped a bit under. He does have to fix that up, but it's a fast macro hatch. It's a fast 1-1 one -one upgrades. He's got that nice upgrade, uh, actually a few seconds lead on one, a few seconds behind on the other. So basically even upgrades for Bly, great creep spread. And we've seen that it's the engagements. If you ever get overcommitted to, to one push, if Bly crushes that, the game's over. He's done this to, so many times against so many players. So uh, for you, Thermal, it's like, yeah, you know, you're looking good right now. You're ahead in supply, but you've got to stay flexible as this game develops. You can't go all in on one push. Uh, Bly does catch wind of those two medevacs going to the left side of the map there, so moving the queens to intercept. Uh, pretty healthy medevacs, so there's going to need more than these three queens. Yeah, the fourth one's rolling up there to try and engage. Um, drop for Bly is loading up on the other side of the map as well. So eight Zerglings have just climbed inside this Overlord and it's going to unload. I think the Starport should see that unloading, but I'm going to go to Euthermal's camera right now. He's veering. He's got Banshees on the right, drop on the left, Hellions in the middle. Good chance he doesn't notice these Lings till they're in his mineral line. He's adding a fourth command center, swapping some production around. It's in vision. These he hasn't, he hasn't noticed yet though. He's microing no. the Banshees. Uh-oh, the lings are hitting the mineral line. He hasn't looked, he hasn't looked. We're on his camera, and he's in the mineral line. Euthermal goes, oh, God, what the hell? Very quick mm -hmm. SCV pull, but a good bit of chaos there, and it's such a small investment, just eight Zerglings. Well worth it here for Bly. Yeah, and a little bit of gas to make, and uh, uh, gas minerals to make the drop a lord as well, which does get picked off, actually. Hmm. He wanted, to, he wanted to watch the Zerglings and cheer them on. Probably should have queued away, but uh, <laughs> buys a bit of time and it just pulls Euthermal's attention away. And this gives Bly a chance to go right up to 78 workers. It's fourth base though. He's taking the central fourth. Okay, I'd love to see some rocks get torn down. If there's one thing I'm critical of um, with Bly's Ling Bane is he never seems to take the rocks down to open up flanking paths. And that sometimes does restrict his movement just a little bit. But I mean, economy is on fire. Spy is on the way. Queens are going to keep the fourth alive. And uh, this game's going to go long. Yeah, it certainly seems like it. Lingbane Muter against just a bio tank. The, the, I guess like the, 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 the sort of unit comp that everyone thinks of when they think of TVZ. You know, like it's it's usually bio tank against Lingbane Muter as it has been. You know, we talked about Wings Liberty earlier. That was the unit comp. There were a couple Mech Terrans. Who were the Mech Terrans back in Wings? Like a long, long happy, time ago. happy. Um, yeah, obviously, we had like the really old ones, like uh, Goody. And a few others. Uh, Ling, Baneling run by getting ready to go for the natural. Drop on the right hand side. We've got some Banelings crash into the Hellbats. That's finally going to allow Bly to retake the middle, which is of course going to allow him to spread creep through the middle, which is the one angle, as well as this top right where Euthermal has managed to slow him down a lot. Those Banshees, such a great resource throughout this series, but they are finally going to be going down uh, above that natural expansion. And Euthermal's identified, uh, I don't know if he's seen the Spire, but he's seen a lot of Ling Bane. So he's like, okay, I'm going to respect this. I'm going into a second factory, drilling claws, going down as well. And it's time to react around some Widow Mines. Very nice choice by him. He just cleaned up a big 15 Baneling run by it, killed one Marine. He's getting a fourth planetary and a drop in the main at the same time. Euthermal's triple drop on the right as well as been drawing Bly's attention away. This is the way you play Triton with Bio. It's about just creating threat in multiple areas, macroing up like crazy. Uh, and he's doing such oh, good trades. Well. Ooh, good transfuses on that last one, though. <laughs> uh, the Planetary has lost a little bit of paint to the Zergling nibbling on it, but of course Planetary will win this engagement, I promise you guys. He's dropping multiple turrets to the bases just in case. Even after thinning out a couple of those muters, I think he might have just got the one muter. Bly is using all of his gas here to remake those those mutt mutts. He's even getting plus one attacks, so really committing to it. A new thermal, he is not taking any chances here. He's going for Widow Mines and also that Tech Lab Factory. He's pumping out big boy Thors. 3-3 three, three starts, the second 2-2 two, two finishes, or at least plus 3 attack does. There's and, uh, plus yeah, plus he's, he keeps clicking on it as well. He's going to add it. He's going to add it. There we go. He, he kept going back to that eBay over and over again, hitting that button. Uh, Marines coming forward. This is the push path on the right. I mean, clearing up this creep as well. If you lose the top right, it's not the end of the world as Bly. I'd love to see Bly start rolling in that third base. Very undefended right now, as is the fourth. It's only a planetary. Marines very spread out. Not that many mines up here right now. Good pickoff on the reinforce from Bly, who then just says, okay, you're up in the corner of the map. You're not protecting your base right now. Euthermal, I think, getting overextended into this corner of the map. Now he certainly is. He's in a very awkward spot there. So yes, he's going to get the fourth base, but losing this third would be really devastating. Lings pull back. A lot of them do go down to the winter mines, but he's losing a ton of SCVs, 11 to go down. And keep in mind that Bly also has a, another hatchery, well, rather two more hatcheries here where that came from on the front line. So he's got actually still five bases worth of mining. 
Oh, he's going too deep. You thermal. This is a mistake. This is what lost you that last game. You cannot go this deep on creep against Bly. I don't think so. He's going for it. Bly's flank is not quite ready. There's no banelings on the front. If he can get this base, maybe, just maybe, this will be worth it. He's got a good pre-spread. This time, you thermal ready for those banelings to come in. He's coming in from both sides. Bly's going to come in from behind. The tank's going down. Widowmine connects with a lot of the banelings there, but still just too much Zerg on the dance floor. It does take out all the Terran forces there by these four Marines with the medevac support up on that hatchery. 17 drones have gone down. There's another drop here, excuse me, behind that mineral line. So he's yep. getting a ton of worker damage done. Didn't kill the hatcheries, but a lot of drones picked off and a lot of forced lava production to remake those drones. Oh man, Uthermal's trades. He's at twice the efficiency of Bly in this game right now, continuing to be annoying with those marines down there the changelings trying to join the party as well oh man he just redrops on the high ground bly's got to be triggered right now two corruptors on the way three corruptors he's all his muters are gone so he's past that muter stage of the game but we're also about to see an upgrade advantage for you thermal the parade is not ending there is no way to get on top of this the mines the marines the tank pushing forward nice play yeah. by you thermal turns out bly is not the only european player that knows when to attack New Thermal breaks the back there of Bly, just pushing and pushing and pushing until he just folds. Doesn't have enough units. Like Pig mentioned, the trades were getting pretty inefficient there. And eventually your opponent, whether whether they're Zerg or Terran or Protoss, are going to start to overwhelm you if that keeps happening. That was a very ballsy push by you, Thermal. Uh, realizing just how much was committed to the other side of the map. I mean, if there was like 20 speed banes already ready at that third at the defensive rally to roll into him while he was moving on creep, like things could have turned very bad very quickly. But... I think Bly was kind of going, you wouldn't push in here. And I mean, the one thing that always surprises me about Uthermal's TVZ and, and the way he wins games where I think he's in a bad position is he has a, a, a star sense. It's the ability to judge a game without seeing everything and say, I don't think you're going to have, you know, the defense is ready for this. He is one of the guys who will shove his army deep, deep into creep, spread the Marines, gun down the economy and just take a trade at a point where you think he really shouldn't be able to. So Uthermal's killer instinct ties up the series we've got that game three hell yeah we do and in we go in the top left here just as the last game let's do another intro it is mr U thermal mark schlappy happy from the netherlands i like i like his uh, na clan tag easy for netherlands good uh, memes is e, e i like the the wolf next to his uh command center up here as well mm, down here in in the bottom right, representing Rye Bread and Razor Edge Gaming, it is Bly on Fire. Certainly is. Both players rocking that uh, early morning D-Gen hours playing a North American tournament. Yeah, right now it is uh, about 1.40 a.m. Uh, um, yeah, and it'd be even worse for Bly um, as he's further on. 1.40 for Bly, yeah. yeah. Oof. So, uh, yep. dedication, man. I mean, That's it. If Snoot was still playing. I, I I bet you we'd see him in every single one of these tournaments as well. <laughs> yep, he's like, well, it's time to get up for Korea. And there's the EU one. And just to finish off the night, right into the morning, that NA one. Uh, people in chat, someone was asking, hey, what's a list of streams? If you guys go to teamliquid.net, it is one of the best uh, places to just check out the featured streams on the right-hand side. Uh, the other thing is, of course, you can always just go to the StarCraft 2 directory, and most of those uh, highly viewed streams will be it. But there's a few smaller viewership streams that are casting other really good games, so that's why Team Liquid is my preferred one. On the top right of it, it will show the current events, and it'll have a list of streams underneath. You'll see me, Maynard, Nathanius, and a bunch of other streamers uh, streaming these awesome games. So uh, that's kind of generally the hardcore way for most players to look up events. You still use Team Liquid as well, right, Maney? Uh, I, I don't use it to post, but to find streams, absolutely. Like, yeah. a tournament. like if I'm like, oh, when is this tournament? First thing I do is open up Team Liquid and, and get like to the calendar up or um, just look at like upcoming events or something like that. And whoever's attached to it, that's how I find the streams. Well, it, it is a swamp and you're not a monster who wants to go wading through the, the depths of the no, forums. It's but also part of the reason why I don't usually go to Reddit is for my mental health and just because I like to be happy. And if yeah. it has to, if, it, if it's blissful ignorance, then hey, it's blissful, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, social media, you know, uh, website forums and stuff, they're, they're great, they're fantastic in very small, moderated doses. And it uh, seems that none of us humans have the ability to actually stop at that very small thing. You know, don't scroll down the Reddit post, a policy that I'm constantly having to remind myself of. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, sometimes it's, it's that human condition, man. you got to see how deep that rabbit hole goes, you know. Is it, what's, what's <laughs> 
And then you're like, oh, that comment's actually, I can't read that because it's been downvoted to shit and your curiosity goes. Yeah, oh, let's let's open that up. And Seems like a good idea. Like, oh God, minus 50, minus 50 IQ and minus a few million brain cells. <laughs> um, and you're like, damn, I can never get that back. I can never unsee that comment. And that's just, that's just it. All right, so very nice opening. Finally getting the creep trim up. That Reaper being a real pain in the uh, in the butt there for Bly. And is it going to come back in and get another yes? It oh no, doesn't know the Zerglings are going across the other side. Hellions will be out just in time. So those Lings really do need to go hide. They are a little bit too close to the front right now for Bly. Of course, as soon as the Overlords leave. Oh my God, that dirty Overlord. And he goes. Yeah. Maximum. Every time, man. It, it, this is something that Bly is always able, able to do, no matter what level the player. Lovely run by here. Uh, and, and it's just one of those things, you know. I've actually... There, there are a lot of people out there that, that think that Beautiful Storms is... Uh, or rather, the, the new Beautiful Storms is lovely run by. Because it's just one of those things that's just, like, not super hard for the Zerg to pull off if they have vision of the natural, right? It's just... They just have those lings ready. It's more yeah. like uh, pre-planning for the play, rather, is the, is the cool thing. Very, very dirty. Um, you know, the Overlord Walkie Talkie's home. Another SCV goes down with that final Zergling. Lovely micro by Bly, who's sending another Ling run by across the map. And you know what I love to see? Three more queens and non-stop drone production. Now, you know your opponent's going to go fast, Banshee. This is the anti-Bly Terran build order. It's not just you, Thermal, who's been doing this. A lot of them have been doing this against Bly to try and defend against that Roach timing that he tried in game one. So knowing he's going against this, his spores are perfectly on time at 4 minutes 30. He's droning reasonably hard he is going a few more zerglings just to be safe against a hellion dive um but i, I think he's just going to drone up to three bases out of fourth out of fast macro very similar game to that previous one here yeah, hellion's point back here to get rid of those lings on that third base no problem there Some relatively small investment for bly still powering that drone count back at home um hasn't really shown us what tech path he wants to go in for is he's still on hatchery tech there's an evo now there's a lair all right yeah, just the same build as last game. He's just playing a bit safer, saying, hey, I'm not going to take 10, 10, 12 losses to the first Banshee. Let's see exactly how he does that. I think that Spore could be slightly more to the left, but only one so far. And Ling's here, looking like they want to actually come behind the Hellions. Oh, this is an interesting scenario. Euthermal, very clever, just pulls out. Just yeah, says, nope, keep them alive. You know, as hard as it is to run by the natural of a Zerg with Hellions, that third base does have those two ramps, so you can always swing in and then swing out to the north or vice versa. Um, and once again, Euthermal's Banshee's coming on in. He's got one kill on the first Banshee, just two back in <laughs> back in pairs here, and you know what happened in game number two. Let's see if that happens again here in game three. There was a lot of drone kills. Good. Nice, Wait, snipe. Sorry, nice. Yeah, halves the DPS here, and like I said, that Spore Crawl is a little misplaced. You want to have it in the mineral line, but just one or two hexes to the left would make such a big difference. Some people go too far on the uh, the kind of, you know, the offensive edge of your base, the edge you know the air units are usually going to come from, and they expose the rear side of their mineral line. Bly has gone too far on the rear side of the mineral line with that spore in the main, and he still hasn't moved it, of course. It's too risky to move it, but that's why he's going to keep taking losses here. So a bit of spore, misplacement, and uh, Euthermal just very good at wiggling his way in and out. Nowhere near the damage from the previous games. But seven drones, uh, or six, nothing to be scoffed at. Certainly not. Uh, Blyer is still going to get into that 70-ish drone economy. It looks like he wants to go up to 74, 75, and then start uh, getting towards his Tier 2 plan. Whether it be just jumping into Tier 3 or going really heavy on Ling Bane and trying to uh, sort of, you know, just spread that creep and take over the map. It's definitely a style I really like as Zerg, is just going Ling Bane until Hive. This looks so, so powerful against the Terran. Like, if, you, if the Terran yeah. just tries to make Marine tank work against a guy going nothing but Ling Bane, it's like, uh, if you're as good as Bly, <laughs> you're not going to lose engagements. <laughs> you just have too many units. I love this uh, hatcheries on opposite sides of the map. If Euthermal makes a big inroads on the creep on one side, and, oh, look at that north. Spreading creep with the Overlord, dropping creep. I love that move. It's giving Very it a cute. little bit of a head start. But, yeah, if one side gets pushed back, it takes Euthermal a long time to push back that creep and get in range of the hatch. And Bly can just be like, pull the drones to the other side, have another fifth base on the other side of the map. So you've got this kind of flexible expanding pattern. Um, one thing Bly missed in that last game was, I think, small and medium-sized backstabs in the early mid-game. Uh, once again, he's going to see tanks have been left sieged at the natural, so probably a good idea to hold out on that for now. But I mean, we're going to see Hellbats more. Six Hellbats, 16 Marines, Stim, 1-1, one, one, Shields, all about to finish in a moment's time. 
What happened here is Euthermal scanned that natural and saw the Spire, so he knows he has a bit of a window here as Bly's teching up to try and take an engagement. Uh, Bly does have a few mailings that are looking for that cluster of Marines, which needs to pick up and get out of there. He does not get that fourth hatchery. He gets a lot of hit point damage done there, and uh, obviously he traded out for a few lings, but loses all of the Hellions slash Hellbats, whatever you want to call them. Banshee's got repaired. I love that move from Euthermal. The Spore has moved, but like I said earlier, uh, this is too far on the left-hand side, so if Euthermal micros this around, the backside of the mineral line is super exposed, and, you know, e either end is a mistake. It's got to be in the middle. This is, oh, why. this is why I'm obsessed with spore placement lately. I've seen a, too yeah, many Jared. too many players die in a BCs, man. And, uh, Jared, spore you know, crawler, pr Krenzel. I am obsessed. You see this here? That's the perfect spore crawler. I mean, kind of. Um, good defense for Bly. <laughs> Maybe one more hex to the right. Like, yeah, it could be better, you know, like... <laughs> Pixel it's perfect may not. A, Pixel a, perfect. Coach here. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... I mean, honestly, honestly, Bly is like controlling this game a thousand times better than the previous one. It's his creep spread that's a little bit worse. But 90 drones, 2-2 two, two on the way. Like, oh, I mean, this is this one's going a lot longer. I mean, Drilling Claws has just started, 4 CCs there. Uh, I like the spread of units from Euthermal. And I love that his tanks are just on defense duty. He's really trying to stay solid against Backstab. So he's just going to do some multi-prong and hopefully create some uh, damage by fighting in multiple areas. But with muters coming out, this gets very dangerous very quickly. Certainly does. Yeah, the Bainling's coming on forward, but that Widow Mine, oh, it actually kills almost as many Terran units as Zerg units. <laughs> so both players lose a lot of army and then just have to pull out. Yeah, it's like, engagement there. it kills like eight Banelings. So you're like, well, that's a great Widow Mine shot, but those Banelings and the Widow Mine shot also kill all the Terran stuff. I'm like, yeah. is this even? I don't know. <laughs> like, I guess that's okay for both sides. It's not, not a drastic swing either way, but... I would say overall it's better for Bly because anything he can do to just push Euthermal away allows him to get this control. And look at that. One doesn't even get to unload. Oh, God. Big momentum shift. Infestation pit's halfway done. Hive's going to be coming. Ultras will be coming in a few minutes. And now suddenly Euthermal can't really open up much damage. He's looking for the mine drop on the north-hand side. He doesn't have drilling claws quite yet. It would be nice if he did. Those, those drones would have all fired. But this is going to be an all right with a mine there. Getting four drones. A couple of links as well. Three Widow Mines is, you know, it's 50 gas, a bunch of minerals. It's like 150 minerals, Ooh. 75 apiece. It's Widow Mine at the front also picked off a bunch of Ling Bane as well and is uh, slowly recharging. So, yeah, it's it's pretty good map control right now for Euthermal. You can see Bly's at 3k minerals. He's supply blocked right now. He needs to build a handful more Overlords. Time to do in a laser, mate. Uh, yeah. Wouldn't mind 10 more Overlords in this game just to be sure. But, I mean, Bly, as long as the, the fights are drawn out and Ling Bane is not a terrible composition for any of these fights... He's going to be doing okay. Drilling Claws engaged. This one with a mine actually oh. doesn't get the fire off that DPS too high there from Bly. He just cuts straight through it. Nice. Well done, by the way. Fourth command center is an orbital. Uh, so oh. what's the late game going to look like? I feel like Euthermal here. Has he got concussive? He does. He's got 2-2. Two, two. He hasn't started 3-3 three, three this game. So there's been a big gap between 2-2 two, two and that 3-3. Three, three. And it feels like Euthermal's kind of slowing down. He does start the plus three attack, but uh, I wonder, are we going range libs to deal with the ultras or are we just going to try to hit a pre-chitinous plating timing, just kind of, you know, just overwhelm with bio mine efficiency. Getting a few Thors mixed in can be nice as well. Yeah, Euthermal's got uh, army up to the north, defending that fourth orbital and trying to bait Lings into a Widow Mine there, which get dragged through by Bly and he still has a lot more Ling Bane remaining, so he pulls through the middle. Meanwhile, that third base, the Mutus fly over it. He's trying to do a Mutalus flyby here, picking up wherever he can. But the Thor! Oh, it's stuck up Mutus! Anticipated. Anticipated and oh. destroyed. Absolutely destroyed. These Mutas trapped between a Thor and a gun place. I don't even know what I'm talking about. The Mutas are dead. They're dead, Maynard. Yeah, and I think that when this many Mutas die, you're like, all right, time for something different. I'm not going to replenish that number. He's going to interrupt this right now. Uh, oh, which, man. you know, <laughs> Thor's decidedly is slightly less less good against, unless you have a ton of them. Um, but yeah, that's a very, very nice catch there for Euthermal. An overextension from Bly that absolutely gets punished. It's not a bad choice. You know, you don't want the muters as much at that stage, but you're really hoping to create some chaos and damage there, right? You don't want to just get them stuck in a corner and all massacred. Euthermal's slowly branching out down the north now. Marine Bio, uh, so it's Marine Marauder Mine. Not much support for it. He doesn't want to get caught on creep. He's still just looking for efficiency here. Yeah. yeah he's going to catch a bunch of those banelings off creep there as they rally on in, getting AI pathinged a little bit there. Bunch of marines uh, come out to the main base. 
Yeah, and Bly actually cancelled plus two flyer attack to start the greatest buy. I really like that choice. I think, you know, the ability to swap into that is huge. Oh my gosh! Big Widow Mine shots. An awful engagement from Bly. Yeah, he lost pretty much the ground army there. What we're looking at right now is the remaining ground army of Bly. These Lings and these Banelings. The Widow Mines are on cooldown right now, so they can't engage. But Euthermal, this time, not getting too deep on that creep. He's not getting a boner. He's chilling. He's happy to bring Bly over to him off creep here so that he can engage the rest of these Lings. Trying to start a step, Bly really wants that surround. After killing that much Ling Bane, you think you got a bit of momentum and time, but remember that Bly was on 90 drones for a long time, and there is unlimited Ling Bane that can come out. Uh, we've got a lot of Marines and Marauders pouring out. Is he going to be able to hang on to these bases, though? If, if Euthermal loses a base, he's screwed. Banelings do find the mines. Most of them go down. The Corruptor's coming in, but it looks like Euthermal, with a great defensive spread and pullback, does manage to weather the storm. And, I mean, the unit's lost tab. I can sense it's going to be disgusting. Let's take a little gander. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Oof. it's disgusting. <laughs> uh, and also keep in mind that off the back of this, Euthermal's still keeping that army nice and high. He's never missed a beat of his macro. He's got plenty of units still to continue to pressure Bly, who needs to remake. And he's going to remake with 11 Ultras here when all those big space cows are out. That's definitely time for him to start fighting back the Terran. But until then, Euthermal's going to push back a little bit of that creep. Oh, the lib on the north side. Um, and yes, I have been calling it north hand side. Chat just called me out. They're like, did he just do a Maynard? <laughs> yes, apparently you've infected my brain. Thanks, Maynard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just, I just did it like three times. I think in this game, yeah, that's that's definitely. hilarious. You're welcome. Your big influence of mine, Maynard. P permanently affected your casting abilities for the worse. <laughs> uh, Liberate is now coming out. Advanced ballistics. Uh, second starport's up. Is not on a reactor. It's second and third starport. No add-on. So still four libs can be built at a time. Uh, and I would say, if you realize how many Ultras there are, you actually want to have like 14 Liberators out, just spread across your bases right now. And you want to kind of chill as you thermal. You do not want to get caught on the map by this army. This is a Marine slaughtering army right here. Mm hmm True to that. Now, these Marines kind of, the, the only place in this game is to deal with Lings directly in engagement. The Banelings, the Ultras, they, they're oh. not going to be too great here. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. For a flank? Oh, it's a sandwich. It's a sandwich. That's a juicy Terran filling inside this one. Oh, 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 oh. oh no. Cuddles. Yeah, not the sort of cuddles you want. That's the sort of cuddle from your overly uh, affectionate, uh, overweight aunt. And uh, she pulls you oh, in close, nothing. pinches your cheeks, and uh, yeah, oh, it's God. a bit too close for comfort. Auntie, uh, Aunt Fonda here coming in and just, <laughs> yeah, absolutely smashing. Aunt Fonda. Cracking a rib. <laughs> yeah. Well, that seemed to be the killing blow by the looks of things here. Euthermal taking incredible damage from these huge numbers of Ultras. He's got a bunch of lives popping out here, but there are Corruptors still out for Bly. Only the Marines are his anti-Corruptor, and there it is. GG, Bly going to eliminate Euthermal here with a 2-1 victory. Bly continues to get deep in these American weeklies, man. He's just unkillable, it seems. Well, until he meets Parting, which is usually where it ends, but... Well, um, I don't know if Parting signed up this week. I think that game we just saw is like the perfect example of why Bly is so hard to play against right now. He's like, I can play, that is a very standard ZVT opening. Certain things are a little off, where he's like, oh, he's like a little later on droning his third, but he's doing more Ling Run buys. So it, it kind of equals out. Oh, he's slightly sloppier sometimes against the Banshees, but he'll take a faster fifth and just jump to 90 drones. And he's just, he gets into the most typical macro Ling Bane muta game. And he rolls with it, and he rolls over someone as good as Euthermal there in the late game. So, you know, it's the fact that he can keep uh, switching his playstyle so drastically, you can't get in your comfort zone against Bly. Spreading creep all over the place, bouncing around, uh, you know, just massing Ling Bane, doing run buys. Bly is a bloody good player. And people look at him and say, oh, but he makes a little mistake here or there. It's like, yeah, that's because he's playing six times as many styles as any other pro gamer. Like he might not be as perfect at them, but the fact that he just shifts from one to another, he shape shifts every game. His opponents cannot keep up with him strategically and, uh, and he's always catching them by surprise. So Bly just smashes it. Well played, man. Well played.